This will hopefully be brief, so there's plenty of time for, to leave time for questions. Just not to make this sound like an advertisement, but one of the reasons why we're very happy that the Ocular Melanoma Foundation chose to have the conference here is because we truly are a national referral center for patients with this unfortunate and horribly aggressive disease. Three quarters of our patients live outside of our local area that Jefferson normally sees patients from. Um, to our knowledge, we're the only institution with a weekly metastatic uveal melanoma multidisciplinary conference with the people you're seeing in this session. We have a weekly metastatic uveal melanoma multidisciplinary clinic. We're performing about 400 hepatic embolization procedures per year, and you may have gotten the sense that the shields are pretty busy in the primary di in the diagnosis of primary tumors. You've been through this. And just to augment the example that Patrick was showing, these are unfortunately the types of patients we're seeing here. This man had a normal MRI six months before, and clearly you can, if I could, and clearly by this time, um, there are now multiple large tumors. And just to speak to what we're trying to do to help patients. The liver is the predominant organ of involvement in more than 90% of patients with metastases. It tends to be the first site and in half of patients the only manifestation of the disease. The tumors can also go to the lungs, the bone, the brain, nodules under the skin and other sites in the body. But in general, the way patients do, the clinical course, the outcome is often determined, is usually determined by how the disease is controlled in the liver which is why the next couple talks are going to be focused on what are we doing for tumors once they're in the liver. And the behavior of this disease is very different from skin melanoma. And while hopefully this first sentence is going to change over the next several years, but at least at this point, improved treatment of the primary tumor hasn't really prolonged survival because in those high-risk patients, the micrometastases have probably occurred prior to even diagnosing the eye tumor. Unlike skin melanoma, there's no effective systemic chemotherapy regimen for uveal melanoma. I mean, in most cases, oncologists, if tumors are multiple sites around the body, you need to give some medication, some drug to go all throughout the body and treat everything. But this disease is very different, and hence the reason that we focus on the liver and Takami is obviously trying to work on adjuvant, Takami and others are trying to work on adjuvant therapies to try to reduce the risk of developing, developing met metastases in patients at high risk. So because the clinical course of most patients is based on the status of the disease in the liver, that's why we focus on treating those tumors in the liver since there's no good systemic therapy at this time. That's going to change in five or ten years. We're trying to help the patients who we're seeing tomorrow in, in our clinic. Uh, role for surgery and ablation, rarely useful due to the presence of multiple tumors. Plus, we've found that when the liver tumors, when one liver tumor may occur shortly after the diagnosis of the primary eye tumor, even if you cut that out or ablate it, meaning putting a needle in through the skin and either burning the tumor or freezing the tumor, chances are additional tumors are going to develop in short order. That's why in this institution we use a cutoff of about five years. There's another group out there that uses three and three quarter years. That kind of gets the point across though. So let's talk about some liver directed therapies. Immunoembolization, radioactive microspheres, various forms of chemoembolization. Karin Gonzalez is going to be discussing those three to follow me. Photomustine is a chemotherapy agent. Uh, it is not available for use in the United States. Um, it's, there are some trials going on in Europe. It's administered through a pump. They put a pump under the skin with a little catheter, a little plastic tube going into the hepatic artery. I think it's delivered at three-week intervals. And there have been some reasonable results with this. 
the medication isn't available in the United States. And survival with that has not been shown to be longer than any of the treatments we're doing in this country. It's another therapy out there available to Europeans. IHP and PHP, meaning isolated hepatic perfusion or percutaneous hepatic perfusion. Um, I saw on the sign that Deltec is one of the generous sponsors of this meeting. They're developing a device for percutaneous hepatic perfusion. Uh, it is available at some centers in Europe for a number of reasons. It was not approved by the FDA for use in this country because there were some very significant complications associated with use of the device. Isolated hepatic perfusion is a major operation that has been in use for more than 10 years, uh, substantially more than 10 years in this country. Uh, none of our surgeons here at Jefferson perform it. When we think it's the best thing for a patient, we refer them to a guy named Jim Pingpank at University of Pittsburgh. Um, I've heard him recently say he's performed more of these procedures than anyone else in the country. Um, it, his, the results he's currently experiencing are about 70% of patients. The liver tumors stay dead for 14 to 18 months. Um, there's a 1 to 2 percent mortality from just undergoing the operation, and it's a major surgery that sets patients back for a couple months. Um, most of the patients we see here have pre-selected themselves that maybe they're not interested in that approach, and sort of the sum of the various procedures that we perform often puts patients into that range of survival or better. Um, we're using it, we're recommending it most commonly for patients in whom we can't deliver radioactive microspheres due to their anatomy, due to the way their plumbing of the arteries is hooked up. So that is a legitimate treatment that has really benefited a lot of people, potentially some in this audience. This is a changing an ever-changing list, but this is just to give some sense of, okay, so why they say so-and-so should get chemoembolization, but they're telling me to get radioactive microspheres. These are our current thoughts. They change regularly. <laughs> uh, but um, patients who, when we initially see patients where less than half of their liver is filled with tumor, we're generally starting treatment with immunoembolization or radioactive microspheres. Uh, we are currently have a trial for patients with radioactive microspheres. Um, we don't know which is better as an initial therapy. We have a large experience using surspheres as a second line treatment. Um, we don't know where it ranks compared to immunoembolization as an initial treatment. In general, we've found that both immunoembolization and surspheres maybe aren't so good for patients with bigger, bulkier tumors. Even if it's less than 50% of their liver replaced, once patients start getting tumors greater than five centimeters in diameter, we've found that those other two therapies aren't as effective. Um, we're seeing some nice results using drug-eluting beads, tiny, tiny permanent beads, and Karin will explain this later, that get marinated in chemotherapy overnight and then those tiny beads get injected, so they block off the blood supply to the tumors, and they also deliver the chemotherapy to that site. In general, patients with more than half their liver uh, replaced with tumor, we're looking to chemoembolization, and we have a long experience here using one agent called BCNU or carmustine. Uh, when patients progress after an initial therapy, we're often looking to either chemoembolization or surspheres if their tumor burden is relatively light. And then there are an increasing number of clinical trials with new medications that offer hope and promise for, the, for future um, treatments, and those also play a role here. But what we're trying to offer at this point is treatment to try to stabilize the disease in the liver and try to keep those things from growing. Thank you very much.